And welcome back to the second hour of our program. Tom Hartman here with you, and Mike Papantonio is on the line with us. The uh, I, oh. I'm, I'm, I'm missing an adjective. I was going to say a pun, pun, but I don't know how to pronounce that word. E-U-P-H-O-N-Y-M-O-U. Anyway, uh, <laughs> the host of ringoffireradio.com and, and, an, and a brilliant attorney. Pap, welcome back to the program. How are you, Tom? I am fine. It's nice to have you with us. Uh, I understand that you are all over Texas water and fracking and the IRS going after uh, and not going after churches. Can you, you yeah, two, can I two, open that rant for you? Two incredible stories. First of all, Texas is burning up. It's dry as a bone. And the frackers are continuing to frack Texas. Now we learn that they, they used uh, about 630 million gallons of water that Texas doesn't have in order to get about 440 million gallons of oil out of the ground. It's so bad down there right now, Tom, that you have people in area, living in areas like uh, San Angelo that are having to they're having to, to to pipe 60 miles just to bring water into their into their little city, little little area there. Uh, Las Cruces, you've got they had to they had to drill a thousand feet after they tried to drill into land next to them to try to bring uh, water in, and it, it, it's very clear what's happening. Fracking is using anywhere the, the the low number is six six million gallons per fracking uh, operation as high as ten million, and the frackers, of course, the, the the question comes up: Well, can't you just use recycled water? And they said, Well, no, it's not cost efficient. In other words, it's going to cost them another three cents per gallon, so they would rather use everybody's fresh water. Well, isn't it also once they've used that fracking water, it's so toxic that even handling it or having the fumes be getting out yes. around the workers would would make it so deadly that uh... it, it's toxic to the point. Tom, that they they have to drill about a thousand feet below the ground just to put it in the ground, and now they're finding that when they drill, there's cracks around aquifers, and the toxins are ending up in the aquifers and coming up through people's wells. So right. I, the story, I, I guess, the worst part of the story is the politicians in Texas. Of course, this the position is this has nothing to do with global climate change. And we need to study this more. And while they're studying it, the entire state is absolutely drying up to a bone. Thirty communities around West Texas area will run out of water by the end of the year. And Rick Perry says, we don't think we really have a problem here. People are making this into something that it's not. And what he, what, what he fails to mention is that 74%, 74% of Texas is now involved in what they consider a severe drought that is so irreversible that once, there, once the aquifer is recharged, it uses up the water too quick to stay ahead of uh, ahead of the recharge. And the Rio Grande doesn't even run to the Pacific anymore, no, does it? I mean, no, the, the big doesn't. rivers that uh, that yeah. that's the biggest. So they're, they're, the the point is, they want to continue the the study. They're having to haul water into Austin, Texas. Uh, around Austin, Texas, you have these uh, these resort areas like Spicewood Beach. They don't even have water to give to the guests when they get to Spicewood Beach. They have to haul it in. 40 or 50 miles away. The worst part about it is it's, that's not where it ends. In order to make all this happen, they're tearing the roads up so completely, Tom. Uh, they're tearing up paved roads. They don't have a tax base to, re to be able to repave the roads, so they're, they're using gravel and rock on what used to be paved roads now for tens and tens of miles and hundreds of miles in some part of the state because the tax base is non-existent. The trucks that are used for fracking have done such damage to the roads, but there's no tax base to pay for that infrastructure. So let me get this straight. Because Texas does not have a state income tax, which the billionaires and millionaires, it's why George Herbert Walker Bush kept that apartment in Texas all those right. years when he was living in Connecticut and said, I'm a Texas resident. You remember yes. Jerry Trudeau, Doonesbury, yes, making jokes about that? Yes. You too can be a Texas resident. <laughs> because tax, Texas does not have a state income tax, their infrastructure is not only just kind of crumbling, it's actually physically, intentionally being degraded back to 19th century, 18th century standards. They're turning paved roads into dirt roads? Exactly. Paved roads, paved roads that had been there for, you know, decades and decades. Now they say, well, gee whiz, we know the fracking trucks have destroyed all the roads, but we don't have enough, we don't have enough money to pay for it. 
The other thing that's happening, people don't understand really even how fracking works, but basically it's a blend of uh, what they, it's a blend of fresh water with sand and toxins that are so mysterious, Tom, that when the fracking industry was sued to try to disclose what the toxins are, they refused to even tell us what, were, what, what was in the toxins. Mm. The, 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 these poisonous chemicals yeah. that are petroleum yeah. distillates, so we know that they're carcinogens at yeah. the very least. But yeah. Amazing. But you wonder, I, I don't, Texas isn't getting a lot of sympathy from, uh, when you take a look at this story, Texas is not getting a lot of sympathy about this because there is the notion that they, it's self-imposed. They've brought mm. so much of this on their own, and, and, and it, it is corporations are simply continuing to just obliterate the state. Uh, it's, and, and, and in the process, Tom, Texas is in a decline financially, you know, the, the, I don't know if you followed the stories where they're trying to prop up, gee whiz, our economy's so great, go to Dallas. Mm -hmm. We're just such a great example of what economic uh, policy should look like. The truth behind that story is the infrastructure's in decline, the tax base is in decline. Uh, when this third part of it, when the environment gets so bad that people have to live in a damn desert simply to live, the decline is, is absolutely underway. When you have to use gravel roads to get around in a state like Texas, it's a bad signal. Yeah, that's amazing. And uh, the IRS, you wanted to talk about the IRS not going after churches that are violating campaign. Yeah, I, it was a great ruling that came out of Wisconsin, a very capable federal judge up there said uh, you had an organization called the uh, Freedom From Religion Foundation that had mm. sued the IRS and they said, you know what, the uh, IRS has failed to, to, uh, to do anything about the overreaching of these churches in the political process. In other words, 501c3 says a couple of things, Tom. First of all, it says a church doesn't even have to be specific. They don't need to fill out all the papers that other 50C, uh, 501c3 organizations have to fill out to get that status. But once they get the status, the trade-off is supposed to be, we're going to allow you to do this, pr provided you do you engage in educational or religious or scientific or other charitable kind of undertakings. We're going to allow you not to pay taxes. And there's one other thing you must not do. You must not in any way be involved in any communications, any effort to put your church in the middle of politics. What's happened is you have uh, you have a part of the religious re the religious movement that is flaunting deliberately flaunting uh, this this issue. They're trying to say, "Come after us! We, we, we dare you!" There's stories there's stories where you have preachers in the South that are telling Republicans, uh, excuse me, telling Democrats that they're no longer welcome in the church. You have churches, Southern Baptists primarily churches that are handing, handing out political leaflets, actually finding them in the pews during an election cycle. They're giving speeches from the pews about who they should vote for. And the point is this, the IRS has failed to do anything about it because it's such a hot political issue. The, the, if you look at the facts, the facts are so overwhelming on the, on, in, on the side of the IRS, there's no question at all that they would, that they would win this. And, and the truth is we have to reconsider whether it's even relevant anymore to be, to be giving these churches tax breaks like we've done historically. And I think this is it's a very important case. Freedom uh, from Religion Foundation is approaching this very aggressively. I don't think it stops with this particular case against the IRS. I think they move towards saying we need to stop it entirely. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I am of the opinion that, you know, outside of monasteries, or, you know, the, the actual charitable works, com Communities for Abused Kids or something that are run by churches, um, there should be no tax exemption. Exactly. You know, just let's just do away with it. Because we all pay for it. Yeah, absolutely. Why should I be subsidizing them? Mike Papantonio, ringoffireradio.com, and, of course, Ring of Fire TV, now on Free Speech TV.